Greetings, mortals. It is I, Remortis, coming at you with a guide for Power World. This time on an in-depth look on how to build your base. We'll be going over the basics and other ways to make your base as efficient as possible. And there'll be timestamps posted below to let you skip to whatever's relevant to you. And without further ado, let's just get right into it, shall we? All right, so as for the basics, we'll just be using this location as it is one of the first locations that most people will be building their base at. It's a pretty solid spot, plenty of room, decent amount of resources nearby, and it'll do just nicely. So the first order of business to even place your base, you need to place down your PAL box. This will be functioning as the hub of your base and it's also the center of it. It also functions as a teleporter and a way to store all of your PALs and it is an integral part of your base. So one thing to note is as you're placing it, um, there's a little be a very faint border. I'm not sure if you can really see at this angle, but there's a very faint uh, blue border when you place your PAL box. And what this will do is A, it will make it so any buildings within it are tied to your PAL box and cannot be destroyed by other players if you're on multiplayer. And it won't decay either. It also allows your pals that are on your base to walk around within the confines of that circle. As you can see uh, over at, uh, on the edge of the lake there, uh, if we put our pal box over here, our circle is in the lake and our pals will eventually wander into that lake and get stuck down there. So that's something to consider. So typically, whenever you're making your base, you want a, generally a big, open, and flat space. And the other thing to note as well is if you rotate your pal box, you see there's a big empty part of the cube there. The backside of this pal box, when you place it down and you bring out your pals, they will be summoned out from that side of it. So if you are in an uneven territory, say if you're on a cliff or something like that, just make sure that just make sure that the opposite side of the pal box, like the back side, is where the more open area is, so that way your pals don't just fall off the cliff or something like that. But for now, we'll just go ahead and place it right about Right here. That should do it. Alright, so then we go ahead and make it. And the first order of business, we need lots of wood and stone. So early on, we're going to get access through our technology. At level 7, we can get our logging site and our stone pit. Each of these will generate a resource. The logging site does obviously wood, and the stone pit is stone. And uh, if you have certain pals that have the ability to, say if they have lumbering, like this tansy here, or the Kativa has the mining, they will automatically start harvesting that stuff for you. So, one, the other thing to note too, before we even start building anything, is that crates within the confines of your circle are all connected to the rest of your base. So, if we put a storage chest right here. and build a crafting bench within anywhere in your base. Then we'll go ahead and put some stone and wood here. It'll automatically use the wood and stone in a nearby chest. And if we take that out, you can see it's not there anymore. So go ahead and put that back and we can build again. All right, so the other basics of your base All right, so we'll go ahead and set this lumbering here. And as you can see here, our pals are helping us since some of these have the handiwork ability. And we'll go over that in a moment. Now let's go ahead and get this lumber thing here. All right, and now they'll start getting to work on that for those that have the lumbering ability. As you see, he'll start generating wood for us. Now, one of my personal tips is when you have one of these is to place a chest right next to whatever resource node it is. Reason being is uh, sometimes when you come back, you'll have upwards of several hundred things of wood here, and that can get quite heavy. So you can stand right next to your chest, go ahead and acquire, and you can just go ahead and quickly just dump it in immediately. Nice and efficient. And you can also do the same thing with your stone pit as well. So the other main thing for your base you need to worry about is in the top right, we need to make sure we have enough beds for all the pals that are currently deployed. And to do that, we just make these straw beds. You can do it wherever you want. 
you to build it on on the outside or you can even just make a little structure in there to make like a nice little housing for your people the spacing can be a little bit weird in here you could potentially squeeze up to four beds here but uh it's, it's kind of odd like i said generally you might just stick with three in theory you should be able to hit four but it's, it's very finicky so i just go with three for each bro we are now we have a nice little shack that has a few of our beds and also put like a little shed in here that we can put some other stuff in here if we desire or we can always just break it down and uh put more beds in there all right so now that we have our resource generation and our beds the other important and most crucial part of our base is making sure our pals are fed with our feed box now depending on what kind of base you're running you will want your feed box to be close to wherever your pals are going to be doing the most working. So if we have our resources right here, we'll probably want our feed box close by. That way they spend less time running back and forth from your base and can get right back to work after their break. Go ahead and put our food in there. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and start getting our farms together. Honestly, two or even three uh, berry farms are more than plenty to keep most of your pals fed quite well. Of course, there are other farms and other foods that you might want to gather down the road or much, uh, from the mid game and high game or the mid game and late game, which actually uses different recipes, but we'll get into that in another time. So now that we have our berry farms, we need to actually plant them, seed them. Uh, we can do it ourselves manually, which can take a little bit of time but we can find a pal to do that for us. Such as the Gumas, which you can find really close by, or the Tansies, or even Litmunks. Those are all really good choices. I prefer the Tansies and the Litmunks because they can do quite a several tasks. So as you see over here on the right, um, these are the different jobs that your pals can do. So this Tansy, for example, he can do quite a bit. He can plant, he can gather, he can help you build things with handiwork, um, if he's not doing any of those things, he'll be able to um, he'll be able to chop some trees down with his lumbering. And then also if there's just clutter around or things that need to be moved to boxes, he can also transport it. So Tansies are pretty solid overall. So we'll go ahead and put him down, and typically he prioritizes planting over the other things. So he'll plant that, all that stuff, and then he'll do the lumbering if there's nothing else to do. All right, and then now that we have finished planting, we weren't going to want to water those plants. So we're going to use Pengulet. Uh, Fuax and also pretty much any of the water pals can assist with this. I prefer, really like the, the Pengulets. They're pretty nice. They're very versatile. They can also do handiwork. They can also do uh, cooling, but that's not really necessary to uh, worrying at the moment. We're not going to be cooling anytime soon. But it is, it is uh, useful if you have a lot of food, special foods that you want to keep preserved. All right, so now our penguin will just come over here and water the plants. All right, and now the berries are planted and watered, so now they're going to grow. It takes a little bit of time, and then once they're done, they'll have to be harvested. And you're going to need a pal that can gather. Luckily, our tansy here, he can do that. And now our base will be fully self-sufficient. They'll grow their own food to help keep themselves fed, and then they'll also go ahead and get us some more lumber and stone. Yeah, so since our uh, lamb, lamb ball is idle right now, he's currently just immediately taking any of the stone or lumber that's coming off and putting it in, in these boxes. Alright, so now that we have all that taken care of, one of the other really crucial parts of your base, in my opinion, is the ranch. This is one of your best facilities, as it will continually generate various resources depending on which pals you have stationed in your base. Let's we'll go ahead and place it right here. Alright, so now that we have this ranch done, if you come back to your pal box and you look at your pals, you can see if they have this town uh, if they have the work suitability called farming typically means they have some type of resource that they'll generate if you have a ranch. Obviously the lamb ball will produce wool. Chickpea produces eggs. 
And then there are plenty of variety of other pals that also benefit your base. So having a chicken is really nice. Eggs are very useful as you can make a lot of recipes with them. So early on, if you're just really just setting up, you might want to have a few chickens just to lay a bunch of eggs because that also can be used as a raw food source or as a, a way to assist your other cooking needs. Um, you can have more sheep if you need wool or cloth, or you can bring Vixies to help you get that early game um, progression going since they can help generate a bunch of pal balls and arrows as well. And always, again, I suggest putting a chest next to any thing that produces items. Just easily throw things in there if you ever get too heavy. Another thing to note is when nightfall happens, generally most of your pals will not work during the night. However, if you have a dark type pal, they will. They will. Alright, now so now we have our basics taken care of. We have our wood, our stone, and our food, as well as sleeping arrangements, and then our ranch. We can start considering how to craft efficient. So similarly to having the food near our primary resources and such, you might want the same thing to happen crafting stations. You want to have them near. I know it's tip uh, people typically want to have all their stations right next to each other and such. While it is aesthetically pleasing, uh, the way the game currently functions, it's best to spread them out just a little bit at least uh, for two, uh, for a few reasons. Um, one, the way the targeting works, uh, you might keep ending up hitting the wrong station you didn't want. Secondly, and secondly, we can pick up our companions and assign them to a specific job by picking them up and throwing them at something. So now they will try to prioritize staying on this. It can be very useful to keep your certain handiwork pals on task. And that way they're not running off. But now they're ready. Um, and then depending on how you have your base set up, whether you have it open air like this one or if you had a closed soft space, um, some of the bigger pals have issues trying to navigate to stay on to stay on that um, particular workbench. It looks like we just set our chicken on fire, so let's go ahead and move this fire. Let's put it somewhere out of the way. This and also, now that we have other, now that we have our fire and eggs, even berries. Even, uh, such, we can go ahead and cook things too. This will allow, or this will make us lot different foods that also give better benefits from eating that, such as your better sanity, to make your pals happier. And happier workers means harder workers. And eventually we can get into something else that will, or that will actually really matter. Alright, so the other crucial task of managing your base is maintaining the sanity of your workers. This can be accomplished by using things such as the hot spring, which will allow your pals to take a break and recover some of their lost sanity by having a nice soothing bath in this wonderful jacuzzi. So what kind of pals should we look into when we're first starting our base? Well, you're going to want to have so you're going to have a chickpea to lay you eggs, as those are pretty crucial throughout the majority of the game. Eventually you can find other pals that lay eggs, but big chickpea will do just fine. Same goes for the lamb ball. They are pretty crucial in being able to produce wool for you, which you turn into cloth and is also used for a variety of crafting purposes. And again, this also will get replaced by other pals along the way. The mozzarina is a cow that produces milk. This is also very crucial for a lot of your cooking needs down the road, but starting off, it's not that crucial just yet. Um, you're going to want somebody that's good at doing lumber. The ichthyrdeers have a level two in lumbering and they will just do that, meaning they won't be distracted by any time you build anything and they'll just keep harvesting wood for you. So I highly suggest getting one of these. Any of these water types are pretty solid as well as you're going to need something to water your plants. Wax are pretty solid, as are pangolets. And you can also can't go wrong with a celery or even a tea fat as well. But the tea fat only waters. So if you have a lot of 
of planting going on. Maybe you only want something with just um, the capability of watering. So that way they don't get distracted as well. But I like the penguin or the FWAC since they're a little bit multi-purpose and they can help you build things. You're also going to want somebody that can plant, such as... So life monks or tansies are really solid choices as they're multi... As they're quite versatile and also can plant and gather your food that you finish growing. And I like the tansies probably a little more than the life monks because they can also transfer stuff to your other your crates. And then you're going to want a fire type to help cook food for you. Or, more importantly, to smelt ingots for you. Fox sparks will do just fine for that. Um, sometimes in some of the syndicate camps you can find an Arsox, which are really good as they have a level 2 kindling and will make those ingots a lot faster. But you can't go wrong with the Fox Sparks. And that's the early game pals for your base that I highly suggest having for production needs. Um, obviously you will do need a miner, so you can either use your Kativas or you can try to get a Depresso. The other one I really suggest is Tombat. Um, it is a dark type. And it has level two mining, and has, um, and it also can help carry things around as well. It's a really good pal. Um, so yeah, these are your early games. All right, so that's your early game, and uh, moving on to the mid game, you're going to want to add a cow in there to help generate your milk. Probably you can replace lamb ball with something else by now. Either you can use the woolly pop, which will make cotton candy. That's more of a food that, rather than a uh, wool. Uh, the the cremies, they can also produce wool as well if you still need wool. Otherwise, I would switch over to something else, um, such as your... Oh, I don't have it on this one. Uh, you're going to want the bee queen version of these, not the bee guards, as that will create honey, which is very necessary for your mid-level crafting. Um, to replace your tansies, you're going to, want to try to get your hands on one of these masandas. They are awesome. They are huge though, so be careful with that. Uh, replacing your penguin, penguinettes would obviously be the pen kings. These guys are fantastic. They do handiwork too, mining too, and water too. Very, very useful. You can get one at its early level 15 as one of the static boss locations over over here. You can also hatch them from large damp eggs, which are pretty easy to find if you're exploring certain areas. Replacing your fox barks, I highly suggest getting an arsox. You can keep your egg deer deer if you still desire lumber, otherwise your panda will be just fine, in which case you can get rid of your egg deer deer. Um, to get a more dedicated miner, I highly suggest the dig toys as they have a level 3 in mining and that's literally all they do. And eventually you can get them a hat which lets you uh, just grind up or deposits really easily. Dig toys can, can be found um, in some of the syndicate camps but they are located in this desert. Um, you will need heat protection so some kind of clothing that gives you heat protection would be ideal here. Or if you fight them right along the outskirts over here, um, you might be able to fight them just fine, just as long as you're on the grass. Well, Sandas, on the other hand, are found over in this area. And as early as this level over here, um, they are usually in the level 20s, mid-20s, so be careful with that. Because one of the other pals in that region are the... Robin Quills. These are also a great companion to have in your base, but I prefer using them for combat. But uh, as such, they are quite deadly out in the field, so be careful when you're trying to get those Mosandas. Another pal you're going to want to have in the mid game is either Patalia or Bristla. Um, the reason being is both of these have a level 2 in medicine, and some of the medicines in the game take a very long time to craft. And I'm not sure about you, but I'm not trying to sit at a medicine base or a medicine bench trying to craft some antidepressants for your depressed pals. 
And obviously you can also double down on some of these pals, like two Peng, Peng Kings and two Masandas, and you'll cover your bases even further. Um, just keep in mind, if you do have a lot of planting and you realize you're, none of your food's getting gathered, make sure you have something that has the gathering perk. That will allow them to harvest your food. And then the same thing, if you have a lot of production and stuff like that, and just, you have a bunch of resources just uh, lying around, make sure you have some pals with transporting. Um, transporting seems to be the lowest tier of importance for your pals, so maybe you might uh, maybe you might consider just having a pal with only transporting. Um, typically, birds of various types will have only transporting. Not nightwing, apparently. Vanworms are uh, pretty solid choices for, for that, since they can also help you with the kindling, and then if there's nothing to be kindled, they can gather things for you around your base. However, their kindling's only level 1, so don't expect them to do things too quickly. And vanworms can be found pretty early on over in this area down here, um, usually in the 15s-ish range. Um, otherwise, they'll be found over here, which is in the 30 plus range. So most likely you're going to want to get one of these over here. And I think that's all I have for you guys today for the beginner base tips and some beginner pals to work, look for for your building and base needs. And uh, in another video, we'll go on to some more advanced tips. Another tip I want to leave you with is using your party pals to help you harvest things and also to produce things in your own base. So while your base will fall asleep at nighttime, whoever's in your party will stay awake. So you can still use them to do a particular task. So perhaps maybe your crafter went to sleep and you wanted them to keep pumping out a certain item. You can put them in your party and then specifically assign them to something by holding E or whatever it is your default button is to um, throw your character. For example, right now I'm using a dig toys and I want him to mine this copper ore really quickly. So I'll th throw it at this ore. And he will mine it a lot faster than he would if he would, which enhances his work speed by 50%. In our next video, we'll be going over advanced tips on base building and such, as well as going into traits. As you can see here, my loop moon, this is usually my crafter as he has a handiwork of level two. He has the passive skill called artisan, which enhances his work speed by 50%. But that's something we will be going over in the next video. So without further ado, Hope you guys enjoy this guide and I hope you guys learned something about some basic building technique. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Farewell for now.